Hello everyone, my name is Karl Zielinski and today we are talking about code organization in the Odin programming language. We will talk a bit about the package system, when to use packages and also some stuff on practical organization within a program or library written in Odin. So let's first look a bit at the package system. So I have a file here called entity.odin and uh, this file imports uh, Raylib like this. This Raylib stuff is a package. So when you import it, then everything from Raylib is accessible under the RL uh, namespace here. If you deleted RL, then you would have to type Raylib in front. So we can find some code in this file here somewhere. Here I use rl.rawtexturepro, for example. So that's how you import a package and how you use stuff in it and how it sort of gets a namespace in front. Now you can create your own packages within your project as well. And a package is essentially just a folder with some Odin code in it and everything inside that folder becomes part of that package. So in my case, here is sort of my folder called game and I could create a new package here uh, by just making a new folder called perhaps I want something called renderer and then inside renderer I put my files for rendering and then maybe from my entity file here I want to use that so then I could just write import renderer and these import paths are relative so since my entity.odin file is here then it when you write something like import renderer it would look for this folder here and maybe this name is a bit too long so maybe you type give it an alias like ren like that so one question then is how do you know when to put things in a separate package versus keeping everything within one package remember here that while renderer is a sub package everything inside this game folder here is also a package so this is one big package everything inside this folder is compiled as one package and then if you import anything from the render subfolder that is all the files in there are is a separate package so when do you how would you know to put things into uh, another package or keep them within the same package and the main thing i would say here is that odin's package system is for creating independent libraries not for organizing code within a program or library why because if you use this for example this render package from your game package then you can reference the render package from the game package but packages are never allowed to have a cyclic dependency meaning that game can reference render but once game references render render cannot reference uh, game so you can't have a cyclic dependency. So splitting things up into lots of little sub packages, it could work if you have a super clean architecture. But so I make things like games and maybe in your game code, it all starts out very clean, but eventually you will need to maybe uh, it, the game will just be easier to make if you could have some sometimes some references, maybe in the renderer, you need to sometimes talk about something of the game state of the game, your entity or something, I don't know. And then if all your rendering code is in a package, then you can't access thing in the main game package. Like in my case, I couldn't access thing in here from the renderer if the game already references the render. So with that in mind, the package system is not ideal for sort of, if, if, if what you're trying to do is sort of create namespaces for things in order to organize your code. Now, what the package system really solves, so let me delete this. This is not code, by the way, this is with my, uh, me illustrating an example. Uh, if we just delete these things, what the package system really solves is that in C, for example, when you uh, import uh, libraries, then there, everything just gets imported into a big global namespace. And then you can, unless everything in libraries is like prefixed with like, uh, little uh, extra bits in front of uh, uh, function names and struct names and stuff, then you can get collisions between different libraries. In Odin, you do not get these collisions because the name here uh, is on the import side. So you, 
if, even even if you had two folders that were called Raylib like this, then you could just give one of them a prefix and all that is namespaced under there. So that sort of solves the problem uh, of collisions between uh, libraries. So use packages to create libraries, such as, for example, Raylib here is a library uh, and it is totally independent of my game. It will never have a reference back to my game. So if that's the rule, uh, what are some ideas for practical organization within a program or library? So let me delete the renderer folder here. So Odin comes from be, trying to be a modern alternative to C. And within a C program, what you do for organizing things is usually you just give them uh, names that make sense. So you sort of organize things by, by just uh, giving procedures and structs and stuff, names. So you can see this a bit in this file here. Here is entity.odin and here I have, for example, entity, a struct, it's called entity, and then I have entity create from type. You can see sort of that the, the f uh, procedures here are sort of prefixed with entity. And that is very much in line with how you would do it in within a C program. Only that, like I said, the package system lets us, we can make sure that nothing will ever come from a library that can collide with these function names. But within our own program or, on our, or our own library, we are in charge of uh, putting in naming things correctly so that it all sort of uh, make sense to us. It, I would say in general, when you have a spe very specific concept, such in this case, I have my all lots of entity stuff, then I just put it in entity.odin. There's obviously a struct called entity, and then there's lots of procedures that work with entities. And then I prefix the name with entity. That's all there is. And when you compile your Odin program or library, then then all the things in the entity.odin file gets compiled into like one single namespace. So from game.odin, for example, I can access everything within entity.odin. So you do not need to like uh, include this entity file from game.odin. Everything is in a package is compiled into the same thing. The only reason to split them into separate files is for your own logical organization so that it's nice for you to sort of navigate and have an overview of it. That's the only reason to do that. And a nice thing about everything getting compiled together into the same thing automatically if they're in the same folder is that if I want to split something out, if I had lots of entity stuff in game.odin and I want to split it out, then I just make a new file and copy the code in there and all the code that references those things that I just copied there will still work, given that I don't change the names of uh, procedures and structs and stuff. So it's very easy to sort of split things off because it's all just compiled into one thing. One worry you might have is how do I make something within one file not be accessible from other files within the same package? Since everything in the package is compiled into one thing, how do I make it so that something in, for example, entity.odin is not uh, usable from a file in the same package like game.odin in my case. In that case, you can write in front of something that you want it to be private to the file. So then you type uh, at private equals file like this. Now this one will never be possible to find outside of this file. In general, I would not worry too much about adding these private things. I have lots of procedures that are not used outside of a file, but it doesn't matter if, like they're only used within the file, but it doesn't matter if they're accessible out, outside of the file, really. So adding this in lots of places doesn't really do a lot for me. What I do use private file for is uh, for making sure that some that I don't accidentally use some global state in places where I shouldn't. So what do I mean by that? So in my game.odin file here, I have, for example, this game memory struct. I use hot reload a lot, so I ha actually have like a global pointer to the, the main memory of the game. So this struct here has a single instance down here, gmem. 
And this one is initialized when I initially start my program and it contains all the memory for the game. And when I do hot reloads, it's sort of uh, this pointer gets uh, reset to the correct one. But that's not the point. The pointer is that I have private file in front of it because I can very accidentally start using this global memory everywhere and the, the code can get a bit, you know, just feeling like I'm constantly using uh, very messy globals everywhere. So in order to combat this, you know, I've, I've made this private to the file so that no other system can use this directly. I, I have small sub things inside it. For example, I have my world here and uh, then I have stuff like the editor state. So the editor actually uh, has a global pointer to the editor state within it, but it doesn't have the whole game memory because it shouldn't be looking at any of this stuff. If the editor code uses any of this stuff, then it's sort of doing the wrong thing. So that's sort of the only places where I use the uh, file private stuff within a package to just limit the usage of some global variables. Now, in, for example, entity.odin here, you see I have this prefix entity blah 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 everywhere. In some cases, I do this prefixing sort of, you know, with the sort of system first here, it's the entity. But in some cases, I don't. So here, for example, I have world.odin. And as you see here, I have my world struct and then I have add entity, remove entity, get entity. These are not prefix with world underscore add entity etc but they do take a world and it's sort of part of the world thingy but I, I i haven't really called these i don't put the world thing in front because i i think it's when you have trouble finding some procedures because of the naming uh, being like random like what if it's like lots of just randomly named procedures and you're having trouble finding them then it's good to put the prefix in, some, in front but add entity and remove entity and get entity i use so much so i remember exactly the names and exactly what they do all the time so i don't need the name in front so it's almost like the name use use naming to make things easier to find but if things are already easy to find then you don't need to worry so much about what their name is because you already know it. So one more thing about this package stuff here is that, you know, I say don't only use packages for creating libraries, not for internal code organization. Don't try to use packages as namespaces is what I said. There are people within the Odin community that has made successfully made software that uses packages for code organization within a library or program. The thing is just that to, to me, it creates so much friction when you're programming the program that to me, it's not worth it, but you could do it. So here's an example of how I think that it sort of goes wrong. So if I took this entity.odin stuff here and put it into a sub package called entity, then our folder structure would look like this, right? And you would maybe have put all your entity stuff into here. Then for example, say that your entity uses this vector2 type here. Where is the vector2 type? Well, it's in the game library inside math.odin, right? So if this game library uses the entity library here and math and, and the vec2 is defined in here, then it cannot use it because uh, cyclic dependencies are not allowed. Game uses entity and entity cannot use game, but vector2 is defined within game. So one way to fix this then is to have something like maybe you have a common folder and you put your so you have your math stuff in your common folder and your entity stuff within your entity folder and then you have to maybe import like if this is your entity file then you have to go like uh, maybe you have to do something like this uh, c dot oh, maybe you call it common because you think this is too long to type so you put common dot vec2 everywhere uh, and then you go to the game file and also in the game file now you have to write import com common maybe like this because all the math stuff is in common so both it's unpackaged as seen from both the entity side of point of view and it's also a package as seen from the game point of view so all of those have to import a common package so in order to use this if you have any code in here that 
uses vec2 like this one, then you would have to write common here and common here. And as you see, this just, it, it just feels like you're sort of fighting something in a weird way. Like, why can't my game just have a vector two type? And and you 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 can you can have a file with sort of import within like you can do sort of like this vec two is common dot vec two, and you could have a file where you sort of pull these things in and make them accessible within the game package so that it can use the vector two stuff. However, I don't think I think you're doing a lot of work. You're doing a lot of extra work when you do this to solve something that wasn't perhaps a big problem to begin with. What I would do, if you if you feel that it, your program is starting to feel this way, like you have like a common package, entity package, and lots of different packages, and it's sort of getting troublesome to stick them all together, the problem is maybe you have split things into packages that shouldn't be packages, because again, packages are better suited for libraries, so if you feel like this and it gets sort of frustrating to program, I would say remove all your sub packages, put everything into one big package, put in some prefixes, some procedure names if you need to, and uh, just and then you're done. And you can make a whole like video game within a single package. That's that's fine. If you compare it to something like programming in C, that's how you did it in essentially. I mean, you have separate maybe headers you include, but all of them go into like a global namespace with the exception that Odin's package system for when you actually import libraries, the libraries won't clash with each other because they get properly namespaced. So my recommendation is still to work in the fashion of C within your programmer library, but when you import any other library, then those will play nicely with each other. Another thing I should just mention here is the package line at the top of each file here. So in game.odin it says package game, in entity.odin here it says package game. This package name needs to be the same for all files within a package. It, it would be a compile error if you have two files within the same package not having the same name. Now as you know when you import a package like Rayleigh for example you can give it any name you want. So this the name the package name within it doesn't really matter for for the actual code that's using it. What the package name is for is for ABI linking, for making sure that when your code is compiled as, for example, a library, uh, how, how it uniquely identifies things uh, within that library. And so if you're just making a program that's not going to be used as a library, then the, the package name isn't that important, but if you plan on it being available as a library that anyone can use, then make sure that you have a, a nice and unique package name. But for any program, or even if you make a little library for use within your own library, then you just need to make sure that that's sort of unique within your code, but it doesn't have to be unique in the grand scheme of things. And also the like because of that the package the, the the name here does not have to be the same as the folder it's in. It can be something longer and more complicated to make sure it's unique. It could be like Metroidvania ish game or whatever you want it to be. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. Special thanks to my patrons. If you like these videos and you want to support me, then you can also become a patron. The link to that is in the description of the video. Have a nice day and happy programming. Bye bye.